Hello everyone. We're now going to look at the valuation of defaultable, defaultable bonds. So in this video, we're going to look at a simple but rough method. And there in uh, subsequent videos, we're going to look at more precise methods that are more indicated for, for trading. Right. Um, so the first method uh, to value a bond is basically just to use a credit spread. So there are different credit spreads depending on what is the reference that we are using. So the first one, which uh, we can call the G spread, where G stands for government, it's very simply just the difference between the yield to maturity on my bond and the yield to maturity on a, on a government bond. Okay? So uh, usually think of the spread as the difference between um, the yield on the bond minus the yield on the government, uh, government bond. But I'm writing it this way here just so that it makes the, the spreads more comparable across all these different spreads we're going to look at. Right? So this is one alternative, government bonds. A second alternative is a, a, a better proxy for the risk-free rate, which is the, the interest rate swap market uh, rates. So I can define a, a, another spread, the I spread, where I comes from IRS, interest rate swap, as the difference between the, the yield to maturity on my bond and the swap rate. Okay. So a quick, very quick example, suppose I have, uh, I have this bond C, which is a three-year bond, 10% coupons trading at this price. Okay. So first I would need to compute the yield to maturity on the bond. Uh, you can check this at home very easily. You get the yield to maturity of 9%. Then second, I'm going to compare this 9% with the swap rates. Right? So suppose this is the, the market for swap rates, one, two or three years. Since my bond is a three-year bond, I'm going to look at the three-year swap rate and I just do the difference between 9 and 691 and get the I spread of 209. Okay. The third alternative, which is a, a better, more precise measure, is the Z spread. Okay. So now what we're going to do is the following. We're going to find this constant number Z that solves this equation, where here I have the price of the bond and this is the coupons of the, the cash flows of the bond. And now this R is the, the, the rate that comes also from the swap market, but it's not, not directly the swap quote, is the zero coupon rate that is implied by the swap quotes. Okay, so let's look at this with this example. It's the same bond as before. I have the initial swap rates as before. The, um, I'm still using these three numbers here, okay? So it's this, the same three numbers, but now I have to do another step, which is to estimate the implied zero coupon swap rates, these three numbers here. So let me show you how to do this. So basically what we do here, it's a, it's a bootstrap. This is uh, exactly the same thing we have done before in the, in the fixed income course, but if you did not take that course, uh, here in these first three lines, you can see the procedure. So I take the first uh, swap, which can be seen as um, um, a fixed rate bond priced at par and paying the, the coupons equal to the swap rate. So something like this, right? So from this, I can imply, I can get the implied rate of return on this bond, which is 5%. Then I move on to the second swap. Again, I can see the second swap as this bond here, right? And uh, I, already I already know the first year rate, so I solve this equation for the second year rate, which is this number here. And then I keep going on through the swap curve. So this would be the third swap. I solve this for R and get the, the third rate. So I now I have this set of three rates, which are the zero coupon rates implied in the swap market quotes. Uh, having that, uh, I now, now can solve for the Z spread. So the Z spread, again, is the, this constant Z that you see here that solves this equation. The price is equal to the present value of the cash flows discounted at the risk-free rates coming from the swap market plus that Z. Okay. So uh, I cannot do this by hand, but in Excel, you can very easily get the solution. Uh, use Goal Seek or, Sol or Solver, and you'll find that the Z spread is 2.13%. Okay. Um, all these spreads we've been talking about are, let me move to the PDF. All, the, uh, all these spreads are for, bonds that do not have options attached to them. If the bond has an option, then we have to adjust for that. So there is this option adjusted spread, which takes into account the value of those options that the bond may have. Uh, we are not going to cover that in this course, so you may ignore this part here. Okay. Um, 
So this is how you can look at this. This is just a, 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 um, a Bloomberg screen sh showing uh, that all these spreads are typically shown in, in the market. Okay, so how do we use this for pricing? Well, in a, in a, in a very natural way. Um, so we, we can, if we want to price a bond, we can just start from the, 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 the risk-free rates and then add the required spread and come up with a price. So the question is, where do I get the spread from? Uh, several different alternatives here. Um, you can read through this and um, we will um, come back through to this in, in, the, in the class. Okay, so let me show you an example here in Excel of how to, how to do this. I will post this Excel file in, in, the, in Moodle, uh, but let's go through this. Okay, so the first page here is just um, a screen from Bloomberg showing you a particular bond issued by this corporation, EDP Finance, which is a, a Portuguese utility. Right, and here I am just repeating the information that comes from the, the Bloomberg screen. So the, the coupon rate, the, 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 the payment dates, and so on. Okay, so now, basically what I want to, to, to show you here in this, in this page is that I can replicate what I see in the Bloomberg screen so that I make sure that I am uh, using correctly all these dates and coupons and all these things that the bond uh, specifies. Okay, so this is the current date, this is the settlement date coming from the, the Bloomberg screen, uh, the coupon dates and so on, I can, com uh, I can compute the, the, the accrued interest, um, which uh, is this number here, and then uh, I'm writing here all the next coupon dates until the, the maturity date at the end, the coupons, so which is this coupon rate that was uh, specified in the, in the screen and the, the last coupon. The payment dates, uh, here I'm just uh, taking into consideration the fact that if the bond has a payment date on a weekend, then the coupon is actually paid on the following business day. So th that's adjusting for, for the calendar um, uh, in a more precise way. Okay? Then the, the year fraction, which is just the, the, the amount of years from today until, so from the settlement date until the, the, the coupon date. Right? Uh, so then what we are using here is the following. I am taking the, the I am getting the information from the screen, the prices, the, the two prices that you see here. So this is the, the, the transaction, the last transaction, but what I'm looking at right now is these two numbers here, the, the bid and the ask quotes, and the corresponding yields for those prices. Okay. So I'm, I'm copying those numbers here, in particular the yield. Okay, and then what I'm going to, to do is to make sure that I can replicate the prices so that I'm, I'm sure that I, I'm getting all this structure right and given the yield, I can match the price, right? So the discount factor for each date is going to use the yield that I see quoted on the Bloomberg screen, in this case for the bid side. Okay. And then the present value of the cash flow is just the, the, the present value of that coupon that I computed using the yield that I see on the screen. Okay. If I sum up all these all these cash flows, I should get the bid price, okay, which is what you see here. Subtracting the accrued interest that comes from there, I can get the clean bid price, okay, which is the one I see on the screen, 113.33, which is exactly the one I see on the screen. The same thing for the ask, so that basically again this is just showing that all this structure here of dates and coupons and so on is correct or it matches the, the Bloomberg screen. All right, so now let's try to find the fair price of this bond to see whether I should buy it or sell it, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at comparable firms, meaning firms that are, are from the same sector, utilities, and that have a similar credit rating. And I'm going to get the yields for those bonds. So Bloomberg gives me this yield for that particular sector of the market and I can, uh, these rates here are copied here, okay? These are yield to maturities, so the next step we do is we convert the yield to maturities that you see here, which are, again, these, these yield to maturities come from the previous sheet, so these, these yield to maturities are here converted to zero coupon rates, okay? So this, this uh, sheet here basically is just doing uh, a bootstrap, okay? So this is just, some guy did this, I, I did not do this, 
but this is basically just a, a quick way to go from yield to maturities here in the yellow column to zero coupon rates here. Okay, so um, um, I, I, don't, I don't want to spend too much time on bootstrap, that's fixed income material. Um, uh, I'm, so I'm, I'm being a bit lazy here, just using this uh, sheet that apparent, apparently works, and that's it. Uh, I mean, if I wanted to be uh, fancier, I, I would take these rates and apply here a, a Nelson Siegel estimation or uh, something like that to make this, um, to make a better curve. But for our purposes, this is enough, bootstrap and get the zero coupon rates, right? So finally, let's price the bond. So th th these are the, the, um, the discount factors that come from this previous uh, sheet we, we just saw, just saw with, the, with the zero rates, okay? Now converted to discount factors. These are again exactly the same characteristics of the bond, the same coupons, the same payment dates. The only difference now is that, um, this is the year fraction still, the only difference is now the discount factor. I am using as a discount factor those um, those rates, or those discount factors that come from bonds of the same sector, right? So I'm basically using the, the comparable uh, bonds to price this bond here, right? Um, so that's the discount factor. In some cases, we are interpolating between when when this year fraction here is not exactly one number that I that I have from the from the sector curve. I interpolate, but uh, that that's it, right? So basically, I get the present value of the cash flows using the discount factor that comes from the um, from the group of firms of bonds that are in the same sector and have the same credit rating. The sum of all these numbers gives me the dirty price. Then I subtract the accrued interest and I get what I think should be the clean price. What I think is the fair value of this of this bond. So I get 116.6. I look at the market and it is trading at 113.7. So according to my calculations, the bond is relatively cheap. I should buy it. It's a, it should be a good investment. Okay. Going back to the PDF. Um, so the, uh, please read through these two paragraphs. The, the, the main idea is that, uh, as you could see, this was a very quick and easy uh, way to to get at a price. However, this is not really a very precise way of computing a price. We will do that in the, in the next video. So what people use spreads for is actually in the reverse direction. So instead of using going from the spread to the price of the bond, we usually see this more used uh, going, as going from the market prices and just computing spreads. And that's um, just a, an, a different way of representing prices, but it's a more intuitive way because we are thinking used to think of uh, interest rates and spreads. So it's a, the, a credit spread. It's a, a, a nicer description of the market conditions than just bond prices. Okay. So in the next, in the next video, we'll start to talk about the other pricing methods.